Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. And I'm Kevin. And we are back with a, a new surprise. A new surprise. I was going to say a battle report. It's a battle report, but it's something... It's not an Alpha Strike battle report. It's not a... It's not a classic battle report. It's not even a Destiny battle report. It's, it's not a... even a Destiny battle report. I don't know. It's something brand new, guys. So, uh, we've been in the laboratory. Uh, I got my, my hard copy of Mech Warrior Destiny. Very exciting. Uh, and one of the things that stuck out at me, even when we played the beta, was yeah. the was the combat system. Uh, now the movement system is no good. I didn't like the movement. The very abstract, like I don't know where I am. I just want to be close to you. Right. Like I'm I was... at long range now. I'm at medium range now. I'm at short range. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> It didn't go. Uh, it didn't go well for me. But what I did love was the the target interlock circuits, how they grouped weapons, yep. how they handled the range modifiers, all of that. It was a nice way to kind of like abstract some of the thematic groupings that ticks bring to the yes. game and, and yeah. put that into like a classic context. You yeah. Know, where you get actual weapon flavors. So yeah, that's what's exciting about it. Exactly the flavor, right? And we loved the we loved the ticks and Solaris. It worked out really well when we did those rules. Yeah. And you're right, so um, what we did was we blended, took out the blender, and we mixed up a little bit of Alpha Strike with a little bit of Destiny. Uh, here's how it works. So the entire movement phase, let's start with initiative. Yeah. So initiative is done individually. Uh, each mech on the board is gonna roll individually for initiative. So, you know, my all four of my guys may go first and his four may go last, or, you know, it might be a mix of, you know, everything has an individual initiative roll. Uh, As you can tell already, I think we're going to be playing with a lance to star size. Yes. Unit. I don't yes. think we're going to be going more than four or five. So it's yeah, going to well, be back to classic style right. scale. Yes, exactly. A little smaller scale, at least to start. Um, and then, so one, once you get through initiative, into the movement phase, 100% alpha strike rules. Uh, so don't worry about facing. You just measure, you move, uh, jumping, sprinting, all of that stuff, stationary, all of those mechanics, the, the MP cost to get up and down hills, all the same. It's mm -hmm. all the same. When we get into the shooting phase, uh, that's where things kind of mix up a little bit. And what we did was we decided we wanted to do um, Alpha Strike calculations because they're very simple. The only difference is we take the range modifier right off the Destiny record sheet. So the way it works, guys, is every target interlock circuit has its own range modifier profile. So, for example, a medium laser... Uh, at point blank is a, is a zero, at uh, short range it's a zero, at medium range it's a two, right. and then at long range you can't shoot. Um, so we just take that mod, we add that into the to the Seder number, right, and you right. get your target number and to the hit. the range brackets are from Alpha Strike. Right, it's so... Three, in our modified scale as right. well. Three, so three 12, 12, 21, right, 30, exactly. Uh, we did add an extreme range because that's how we roll, uh, so no surprise there. So extreme. Um, the only other modification I did for those of you that are interested, that are that are Destiny fanatics. So when you calculate the pips on a Destiny card, uh, basically you look at the armory divided by three, except for the torso. The torso sections all get combined into one location, which is great because it's a little simpler. Um, but what they did was they took the center torso, they ignored the side torsos completely, and they divided that by three. I didn't like that because there are certain mechs like the Marauder that have very weak side armor, and it had an incredible torso uh, armor in this particular Destiny game. All um, abs. Yeah, it was all, all abs. <laughs> Just pecs for days. Uh, but, you know, realistically, it's not that tough. Um, and I didn't think that was a good reflection. So what I did was add it all up and divide it by seven. Uh, and that got it very close, but I took a couple of case studies and I figured out, you know, by percent where I wanted it to be. Mini analytics, if you will. Uh, but that was what we did. So that changed a couple of things. So Max like an awesome might have picked up a pip. The Marauder lost a couple. The Archer, you know, I think picked up a pip. So it was a little bit more. I felt better about that. Um, but otherwise, everything, guys, is like right out of the rule book. Uh, or rule books, I should say. <laughs> uh, so pretty excited about that. Um, heat, very simple. We're going to use the Destiny Heat system. It's very similar to Alpha Strike in the sense that it's a smaller scale. It's a, it's a six-point scale, zero through five. Does have that ammo explosion on there, which we all know and love does have a, you know, an avoid shutdown, shutdown roll, right? Um, the other thing I will say about heat is that when you fire weapons and you jump, you build up heat. Alpha Strike, it's only jumping, and if you overheat. In this game, you pick and choose what ticks you want to fire. Right, um, it's right off the Destiny stats. Exactly, right. Yeah. So so I really like that. Um, and, and the other thing I'll point out, though, is uh, piloting and gunnery are back, right? So it's no longer just skill like it is in Alpha Strike. You got piloting, you got gunnery, mechs are falling over. 
pilots are taking damage. Um, all of this stuff is right out of the, the Destiny rule books and it, and it fits very nicely. And it's, uh, it's like Legos. You just kind of pick and choose what you want and, and you got a great system. So uh, we did a couple of test games. It went really well. We figured we'd do a battle report and see how it goes. And if it goes really well and you guys like it, uh, we'll, we'll throw some rules together and put them up on the website. So, Kevin, Without thoughts? Without further ado. Yeah. So let's talk about tonight. So tonight. We need a name for this system. I was petitioning for one, but we, we need to come up with a name for this system. <laughs> what was the name you were petitioning for, Kevin? Counter Strike. I think is that copyrighted? I feel like I feel like every time I think of Counter Strike, I like think a nineties of... video game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I think about college. That's essentially what I think about. Uh, so all right, so basically tonight we are uh, we're doing uh, a brand new unit, uh, Kevin. Yeah. What do you got? The Tamarind The first Tamarind Chevaliers. Mm. Gosh, they're so they're so, so cultured, pristine <laughs> in their white armor. They look great. Yeah, they're a, you know one of my new units for the Free Worlds League. I, I'm representing now some of these factions, the houses that I have not in the past. I know. Look at you. Look um, at you. Yeah, just a little provincial force that that creeped up in the succession yeah. wars that no one really knew about. Very cool. But they're trying to make a name for themselves. I love it. Defending a. Uh, Often conflicted world, right? That's yeah. going to be on the Lyran yeah. border. Yeah, exactly. Very exciting. Those uh, Dona Jals. Dona Gales. <laughs> I, we've been, we've been yes. criticized before, Kevin. The Donegal. I'm going to say it again. Donegal Guard. Uh, the 20th Donegal Guard. So I had a force of Donegal Guard, uh, and they were painted. And I didn't really like the way they looked. So when I got all the Kickstarter stuff, I had earmarked a bunch of them to, to sort of replace. Uh, and, I, and I took some of them and, and just, you know, sort of cleaned them and repainted them. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy with the way they turned out. I think they came out a little mm -hmm. bit better than the last rev. Uh, but so I've got 20th Donald Guard, and, and all of these mechs guys are, are new, uh, either new Kickstarter mechs or mechs out of the game of Armored Combat. So all new sculpts tonight. Yep. Um, speaking of that, why don't we take a look at the forces, shall we? Let's do it. All right. So there are the forces looking real good. Also some uh, some brand new green screen animation action courtesy of our patrons. So thank you to all you guys out there uh, for your support. And of course, guys, if you want to get in on the action, you can head on over to Patreon and join today. Um, but that said, we're ready to dive in. We're doing a pitched battle. So just a straight up slugfest. We're going to put this system through the ringer and see what happens. So guys, stay tuned for some inner sphere on Inner Sphere Slugfest action. Let's do it. Stay tuned. It's coming right up. Unidentified radar six in sector Delta eight three. I have nothing on scanners. Stand by, trying to cut through the interference. Forward three. Forward three, do you copy? Forward three, come in. 
All units, I've lost contact with forward three. Form up and head to nav alpha. Base, what are we dealing with? Last known coordinates puts them near the Celathon Industrial Complex. Intel is now saying Donegal Guards. Give me a break. These jokers again? Looks like we're gonna have to kick them off this rock one more time. Alright, stay tight, people. I've got multiple contacts. Fire! Alright guys, here we are on the Free Worlds League planet of Nestor. Uh, so, the 20th Donegal Guard. This is, uh, this is a hotly contested world, and they're back again. Uh, the 4th Donegal Guard did a raid several years ago, decades ago even, and failed, Kevin, to capture uh, anything of value. But the 20th are back, hoping, hoping to do uh, what, their, uh, what their buddies could not, but your chevaliers, as mm -hmm. they say. Uh, they're here, and they are ready to do battle. So we are just doing a pitch battle uh, mission, which is like a straight-up slugfest. Uh, Kevin chose to deploy on that side over there, um, so I'm deploying on this side over here. So guys, we're going to move into turn one. We're going to roll for initiative. We'll handle that off-camera. We'll let you know where everything shakes out, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are after turn one excitement abounding. So what we did was we rolled for initiative. Each pilot rolls 2d6 and based on their piloting and gunnery score, uh, just like in the Destiny book, they're assigned a basically a level. You know, rookie, uh, I think is what the lowest level is. You know, regular, veteran, elite. Um, elites get plus two to their initiative. Veterans get plus one. Regulars get zero. And uh, the rookies or green, whatever they're called, get minus one. So uh, what we did was we marked these dice, we put them on top of our record sheets here, and we moved just like you would in classic or alpha strike, the loser moving first. So the, the lowest scoring uh, initiative goes first all the way to the best. Um, and basically everybody sprinted. And again, we're following the movement rules for alpha strike. Uh, so that is that no one can shoot. So guys, turn one's over. Kevin, how do you feel so far? You love it? I love it. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, so stay tuned. Turn two, it's coming right up. Turn two, guys. Mechs are in range, I think. I got two mechs here, Kevin, with LRMs, uh, potentially able to hit some of your big guys coming over that ridge. Uh, so let me talk about what I did here for movement. Uh, my my mar uh, Marauder and my Battlemaster... Um, didn't have any range. So guys, remember this This is not like Alpha Strike where, you know, it's your long range, basically minus one for damage. Like if your weapons don't reach out um, beyond, uh, I think it's 19 inches or more, you don't get an extreme range bracket at all. Um, so for these guys, they don't have anything. PPCs reach out to 18 inches. It's the best they can do. So they both sprinted. Uh, however, my LRMs can potentially, if I'm in range, which I think I am, reach out and hit maybe that awesome or that Wolverine. So I had my Griffin move down the hill, Thunderbolt doing the same thing um, around here, these uh, these electrical towers, hopefully not providing too much cover for that Wolverine. So Kev, tell us what you did here on your side. Those well, I got the um, the assault and heavy kind of holding up the middle there. So I guess, you know, pretty tight formation, some of yours. Uh, pretty much the jump jets on the two mediums, jumping ahead, and then the, you know my bigger guys sprinting forward to keep pace. Very cool. So, more defensive, just trying to get into position right now. All right, sounds good. A lot of PPCs, so I'm biding time. <laughs> I love it. 
All right, so what I want to do here is I want to measure range and see uh, if I am in fact able to to hit you here. So I'd like to try to double down on that awesome Kev. But let's see. So I need 30 inches. He's in range. Looks like he's in range as well. Like 29, 30 is here. So we're going to both go for that awesome. Uh, the Wolverine's got a ton of cover. I think that would be a little bit too much of a of a difficult shot. So the way it works, guys, is um, is this. So if you look on the record sheet here, uh, all the weapons, and maybe I'll just flash it up on the screen, um, you'll see they have a point blank, which is base to base. That's like physical range. So weapons can shoot in, in like point blank on like Alpha Strike. Uh, short, medium, long, and extreme. So at extreme, LRMs give me a plus four range modifier. Everything else is, is calculated normal, normally. So I'm a gunnery three. He is a, a TMM of two. So I'm at a five and then plus four is nine. So I need nines to hit uh, with this LRM 15 at range. So here we go. Looking for a nine. All right, so I got it. I got an 11. Now on the damage, Kev, for an LRM 15, it says two plus M with a maximum of five. So for every M, uh, I roll 1d6. This is like sort of like how many extra clusters hit. And if I get a 1, 2, or 3, it does that much more damage. If I get a 4, 5, 6, it does nothing. All right, so nothing extra. So the uh, LRM15 does two pips of damage to your awesome, and I roll for location, and I got an 8, which is torso. So you'd mark off two pips on the torso section of that awesome. Um, now, while you're marking that off, I am going to... Uh, fire the Griffin. LRM 10, it's going to be the same exact number, same range, same gunnery, all that stuff. And I miss. So it's just that simple, guys. You don't need handfuls of dice in this like you would in Alpha Strike. There's really no need for any piloting die because all the weapons are already grouped into ticks. Um, so it's real clean, real simple. And that's that. Now, as far as heat goes, every weapon group, again, if you look at the record sheet here, LRM 15 builds up one point of heat. This thing can dissipate three. Uh, so no heat there. You don't you don't ever build up heat for moving unless you jump, um, and then it's just one point of heat there. So uh, we're all good. Now, Kevin, I believe your Wolverine is potentially in range, right? Did you want to shoot with him? I don't think he is. A 21, no? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just out. Okay. All right. So, guys, that concludes shooting. Um, and that's basically that. So, we will move into turn three. Guys, stay tuned, it is coming right up. It is turn three already of this exciting Battletech Destiny game. Uh, Kevin, exciting times over here. Do you wanna start off and tell us what you did here? Yeah, I guess. Um, I advanced, not too happy about it. <laughs> Just feeling kind of mediocre about the advancement. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah, but the, the Warhammer moved up, the Awesome advanced, um, everybody advanced for it. All right. Well, that was riveting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let me tell you what I got going on here. So this Griffin, uh, he's sweeping out here on the right. He's mortal enemies with that Wolverine. Uh, they're vying for 55-ton supremacy. Uh, the Thunderbolt and Marauder are both staring down that Awesome. Uh, and the Battlemaster sprinting. I, I was tempted to move out and shoot that Phoenix Hawk, uh, try to get in medium range or, or at least hit him with a PPC, but I know better. I know better than to be on the wrong side of the reactor stack. I've been there before. Uh, That's why I'm pissed. That reactor stack is beautiful, but it's just... <laughs> it's, it's, it's imposing. It's obtrusive. It's obtrusive. Uh, so the Wolverine gets to kick us off. Yeah, AC5, I guess. All right. And who is he shooting? Uh... His mortal enemy. The Griffin. The Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's a gunnery three. Uh, your team of two, so five, and then nine. Okay. I think that's that's all I'm accounting for here. What's your uh, what's the long range on the AC five? Is it is it two? It's a plus four. Oh, it's a plus four. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Not that nice. I'm not too happy about it. Not too happy about much with this. There it is. There it is. Okay, so. I take some damage. So, Kev, how much damage do I take? Two. Two points of damage. All right, and so I'm gonna... Location, right? Uh, you do need to roll location. Seven. All right, so that Griffin takes two pips. 
to that torso section. That is, uh, that is, that is nasty. Okay, uh, so it is my turn to retaliate. So the Griffin has uh, two weapons in range, both the LRM and his PPC. Uh, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to I'm going to fire both. I will be uh, I will be taking on some heat this turn, but I feel like it's worth it. Uh, so the PPC does four points of damage. It's delicious. I am at a three, four, five. I need nines on this PPC. All right, so same deal. Need nines. Come on. Man, a little bit short. A little bit short. Just a little bit. Uh, the LRM only needs a seven. The LRM a little bit better of a range profile. Uh, only needing a plus two at long range. So here we go, sevens. All right, so got it. So that LRM does, this LRM 10 does one plus M. And again, with the M you roll a dice, one, two, or three is that much more damage. A six, so nothing. Just one pip of damage. That's going to the four, which is the right arm. So one point of damage to the right arm. So you've won this round, Kevin. Uh, in the Griffin vs. Warhammer, I'm sorry, Griffin vs. Wolverine duel, I should say. Uh, now let me think, what else we got here? So who's who's the next in the order? Is the awesome. So we are going to be going for, I guess, just two PPCs. Okay. Um, that will be a four, Eight, five, think, six, yeah. seven. Yeah, you're right. Uh, oh, right, because he's skill two, right? You're awesome as yeah. an elite. So two, three, seven. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, this is seven points of damage, guys. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so this is where the game gets ugly, right? right. Is that seven's pretty deadly. Seven's deadly. It's <laughs> dual PPCs to one location. The tick all hits the same spot, so it does speed up the game quite a bit. Oh. Well, uh... <laughs> That is, that could be a dead marauder, but Kevin, I'm going to use my my pilot's edge and force you to re-roll. So Destiny has a mechanic called edge. Can I edge and like say no? No, you cannot. You, <laughs> not, you cannot counterspell my edge, you <laughs> jerk. Oh, but, I'm the jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Kevin, Kevin feeling hot here now. All right. So four. four. That marauder is hurting. Woo, mm. boy. Oh, boy. All right. So I spent my edge. I take seven to the right arm. Uh, all right, so my Marauder's firing back, Kevin. So before I forget though, I do wanna mark my Griffin with a pip of heat here, uh, as I am as I am getting a little little crazy already. My Marauder, uh, because it's, it's you know, it's, it's we're basically back to the, the derelict heat management that is classic. It, it builds up heat from firing both its PPCs. So I wanna fire two PPCs and an AC5. Uh, the PPCs are on one group, the AC5 on another group. So the Marauder, he's my elite as well. So I'm going to need a 7 to hit you with the PPCs uh, and a 7 to hit you with the AC5. All right, so here we go. For the PPCs, 7. Come on. All right, so just nabbed it. So 7 points of damage. Oh, you know what else, Kevin? Forgot, I have to take a piloting check at the end of the turn, right? We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me roll location for the PPCs. A nine. All right, so that is left leg. Um, so a couple of things. One, same locations as classic, right? Same exact location hit chart. The only difference is all the torso goes to one spot. Uh, one thing I did when I created these custom cards is um, it's very funny. You know, in classic, when you look at it, it's like left, center, and then right. Well, on the Destiny, it's right, center, left, and it was driving me bananas, so I switched it around back to match classic, because um, I was constantly marking off on the wrong side. But anyway, I digress. So one of the rules we pulled out of um, classic Total War uh, is when you take 20 points of damage, remember you have to make that piloting check. So in, in Destiny, 20 is basically seven. Mm -hmm. So for every seven points, you gotta make a piloting check at the end of the phase. So Kevin, you and I both have to, uh, to make that. Now I still have my uh, AC5 to shoot here. Need sevens again on that guy. Now, there is no through armor critical on a 12. It is, we do we do have a floating critical on a two though, but not a 12. So a 12 is a hit, and that's only on location, by the way. Uh, and then CT. So the CT is going to take two points of damage, and that is that for the Marauder. All right, so 
On to number four. That's the Warhammer. Is he shooting? He can't. He can't. He's not in range. There's no range. Okay. Um, so there. we go down the... Well, Kevin, just double, double, check. double check in here. Yeah. No good. Going down the progression. Who's number three? The Phoenix Hawk can't shoot. Number two is my Thunderbolt, who can shoot. And then uh, number one is the Battlemaster, who sprinted. So we're going to the, th the Thunderbolt here. He is over 21 inches, uh, so he's at extreme range, but can fire his LRM-15 at the awesome. All right, so I'm going to need eights to hit that awesome with my LRM-15. Here we go. Okay, now one thing about edge, not that I'm going to spend it, but if I if I wanted to, I could choose just to roll, re-roll one of these dice. So I could theoretically just do that, but I'm not going to do it. Can't do that on a location, right? I can't, uh, you can do it on any dice roll, it says. Any dice roll. So, you can force me to re-roll location, I can re-roll location, I can re-roll hit, I, you know. I like we need to make that both dice. Like, imagine if the implications of, when you get a six for location, you're just fishing for that headshot. I mean, listen, this is, but you only get one edge point uh, per game. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's big. I mean, you could do that, but I mean, there's still, yeah, I mean, 16% chance. <laughs> so close. 16% uh, of the time it hits every time. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so we're done, right? Uh, Marauder, some arm damage, the Griffin taking some damage to the CT, your mech's getting banged up a little bit. So things are moving and shaking, guys. Turn three is over. Turn well, four. Not quite. No. What? Let's do some piloting. Oh, you want to do that on camera? That's a great idea. Well, I mean, let's do it. Within the turn. That's true. Anything okay. can happen. It is true. Okay. So the awesome just took damage, so he's going to need a... We're doing the... He's dead, just a four. four. Yeah. So he's a, he's a piloting skill of three. He had plus one for taking 20, well, seven points of damage, right? So. Yeah. All right, he's good. My Turn. Marauder. And I have no edge on this Marauder. This is... And piloting hits are, are scary in this game, guys, as you'll see if one happens. Oh no, God, Kevin, I jinxed myself. All right, now I do need to roll to avoid the mech warrior hit, right? To avoid the pilot hit. So I need a four or better. Okay, it's so- the same my, roll? Was it, it always affected by the same mods? It is. Mm -hmm. um, so the mech warrior doesn't take damage. I'm throwing dice here. However, my mech does take damage. So Kevin, you get to roll location there's no, like, you fall on your left, fall on your right, none of that. Uh, but the Marauder, you know, basically it's like your tonnage divided by 30 rounded up. So a 75 ton mech basically takes three points, and they go to three different locations. So Really? Well, yep. Wow. It's Random. It is tedious, yeah. First location would be... Torso. 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 And is that left arm? Ten, yeah. All right, so torso, torso, left arm. So guys, that is that. Uh, Marauder, Marauder down. Uh, just gets nuked by a barrage of PPC fire from that that commanding awesome on the hill. The Chevalier is a nice opening round of fire here. Can the Donegal guard? I feel a little bit luck. better than I started the round. <laughs> you feel better now. <laughs> I mean, you forced me to use my edge on a headshot, and uh, you knocked over that Marauder. So yeah. we'll see. But that battle master is coming around the corner. So we'll see you guys. Turn four is coming right up. All right, guys, it's turn four. Uh, exciting stuff. As you can see, this beautiful Hardware Studios reactor stack here at the center of this vicious battle for control in this industrial sector. Kevin's force is now cresting the ridge. The Phoenix Hawk coming around. The Donegal Guard trying to do something here. We'll see. So, Kev, do you want to tell us what you've got? You got cooking. Well, I feel a little bit better than I did last <laughs> time. Uh, but n not much has changed. I think the most exciting thing is the Phoenix Hawk kind of came up and is taking cover behind the reactor. Can't really see or be seen by many things, but um, that's fine. And then the, um, the Wolverine did a little jump jack over that um, exhaust port, I would call it. Uh, so getting a little bit better TMM, um, but kind of in the middle of all the action. I guess that's fine. He's pretty beefy for a medium. Yeah, so. very cool. And and that is a that is a very nice piece of terrain there. Look at that. It almost looks like the bottom of a dropship. Almost looks like there's a buried dropship in the ground upside down. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it just came crashing. Just, just down. a field Steiner landing. <laughs>
<laughs> We're coming in hot. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about the Donegal Guard here. Uh, <laughs> it's too good. Uh, so this Griffin continued its ad its advance out here on the flank. It is suffering from a minus two um, movement penalty, uh, courtesy of the heat. And uh, the Thunderbolt moving up into cover, Battlemaster not sprinting, just moving around. The Marauder had to make a piloting check to stand up. Couldn't really move much further, again, due to the heat penalty. Um, no TMM for that guy. So we are, uh, we're going to roll right into shooting here, guys. And, and Kevin and I were just talking off camera. It is going to get bloody. So, Kev, what do you think you want to start with? Who's number eight on your list? Is it the old Phoenix Hawk. So... It's the Phoenix Hawk, okay. You know, I don't think he can really, he's probably got too much cover for the um, uh, Thunderbolt. Okay. Because the Thunderbolt looks like it's, maybe, I don't know, maybe he can shoot the Thunderbolt, but he would certainly have cover. Okay. Long range. Yeah. Large laser action. He's a three, <clears throat> four, and then we're dealing with long range, which is going to make it a eight. Eight. Yeah. Got a large laser, yep. I, I mean, I... <laughs> So I just need more overhead cameras. It just doesn't matter where you are on the board. Uh, so a seven, not going to do it, right? Just a, a near miss. Going right into the Wolverine. He is going to actually go for... Pretty sure he's got that Battlemaster. Yeah, they're at medium. All right, so he's going to go for that Battlemaster. He's going to fire AC5 and MLS Ooh. and SRM6. Any heat build up there? Or is he good? No. Nah, That's such a great mech. Yeah, this Even in, in all systems, of, in all forms of battle tech, the Wolverine is fantastic. All right, so what are you going to need for the... Uh... They're going to be the same, So, but they're rolled oh, okay. separately, right? So yep. we'll start with the AC5. That one's got less punch. So three, four, sixes? Uh, he's gonna, but he did jump, so I, I am eight. dealing with that. So you're going to need an so eight. So three, four... Five, six. And then plus two for jumping, yeah. Seven, yeah that's right, jumping's two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It's still Eight doable. It is. Still, do still doable. Okay. All right, now for the big one, the MLAS and SRM6. There it comes. There it is. All right. All right, so, well done. It's a missile, so we'll check for the missile, right? Nothing. Nothing. So four damage. All right, now let's see where that goes. CT. CT. It's where you want it. Long story short, <clears throat> one laser to the chest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm moving here to my Griffin. So he's number six in the initiative order. We're going stepping down the order. So he's number six. Uh, the heat is okay enough to shoot. There's no firing penalty until you get up to two points of heat. But I'm going to try to cool down this round. So I have basically, I can dissipate two points of heat. I'm only going to fire my LRM-10. I'm going to fire that at the Wolverine. Uh, so, what do I need here? Three, six, and I'm at long range. Seven, eight. Uh, LRMs are only plus two for that. So, need an eight. Here we go. Got it. Uh, I'm looking for that M. So, two. So, I'm going to do a total of three points of damage. So, here's how this works. The first, is, uh, so basically, the, the way the damage is read is it's, it's one plus... M with a maximum of three. So I rolled a two, two plus one is three, so I'm within the maximum. The one point is one group, and the two points is a second group. So for the one point group, it's gonna hit the right leg. The two point group, oh, oh. Well, we're gonna edge that. You gonna edge it? You doing it? Yeah. All right, so Kevin's spending his edge. Here we go, two point group. Oh my God! Should I spend my edge and reroll this five, Kevin? Should I do it? I won't. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so left arm is 11. So two points to that left arm. All right. Thunderbolt's up next. Kev, I'm going for the Wolverine. I'm going for broke. This Thunderbolt is a just a monstrosity uh, at this range. I've got three medium lasers, an SRM2 in one group. And then I've got my LRM15 in another group. So we're going to start with the LRM15. Uh, it's plus zero at medium range, so I basically only need a three six to hit you right now. So here we go. Who's your shooter? Uh, Wolverine. Thunderbolt to Wolverine. Here we go. So that's a hit. And uh, oh, what do I have here? One M. So it's a two plus M. So nothing. Just two points of damage, and that's going to the to the torso section. And now the big group. 
Uh, so this is going to need an eight to hit because this is plus two at medium range. Uh, so three, six, seven, eight. And guys, point of note, in Destiny, all of the range modifiers are expressed as a negative number. You just take the absolute value. It's because the way they, they do the math in Destiny is, is it's, it's like a comparative test, so it's different, but all works out the same. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm plus two at medium, so I need eights to hit. If I hit Kevin, this is six plus M damage. This is, I know, I could do up to seven points maximum. So what do I got here? Looking for an eight, I got to hit first. <sighs> Just connected. I need a one, two or three here. Nothing. All right, so six points of damage, and that's going to the torso section. Can I force that attack roll? Ah, uh, we already spent your edge. Not on the... I yeah, did, uh, you did with the headshot. Ouch. Is that going internal? Mm -hmm. Man. Beefy Wolverine. God damn those Wolverines. All right, so... <laughs> uh, so, six, five, we're at number four. That's on your side. That is that uh, awesome. Starting with that single PVC. Um... We're at medium range, I believe. Could be, should be. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I checked it myself, yeah. right? Um, and he's an elite, so we're gonna need two, four, five to hit. Two, four, oh, your, your range mod's only two with the PPCs at medium. Oh boy, you only need a five, okay. Yeah, true story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is brutal. So this is the single PPC. Yeah. I mean, our pilots are good. Like, this is an elite pilot. Yeah. I feel like at medium range, that sounds about right. All right. Okay. Let's see where that lands. So right, six so is going to be the torso. Oof. Okay. Mm. That's a substantial chunk out of that battle yeah. master. I think well, he only has maybe 11 on the torso. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the Gets other worse. PPC. Yeah. You started... Two. This is the double PPC. Oh, that was just the single. Okay. So he takes four then. All right. Here comes the yeah. double. Hits. So close. I mean, you could, Kevin. You could do it. I do have edge, though, to force you to reroll on the Battlemaster, so I wouldn't, but. You, but I thought we said you can't edge an edge. You can edge an edge, I just can't cancel your edge with my edge, so I would force you to reroll. Okay. And if you get you, another you 12. You counter edge. Yes. That's left arm, right? You, you can reroll that if you want. I mean, I'll save it for a rainy day, you know? Yeah, okay. So he takes four to the CT. Four to the CT, seven to the left arm. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna kick off here with the Battlemaster. He's up next. So much, Kevin. I have a group that does nine plus M. Uh, it's four medium lasers and an SRM six. I feel like, I feel like I wanna use that against the Wolverine. Um, it won't matter what it hits. Yeah, now if I fire the PPC on top of that, I would build up a point of heat, so I don't think I want to do that quite yet with this battle master. But I am gonna, I am gonna fire that big group. It's, it, I mean, it's interesting. So these groups are right out of the book, but you, you can group your own weapons uh, if you so desire. And it's sort of interesting because the more you group, like you have this like gigantic boring hole in somebody's armor, but it's a single roll. Like, you know, you miss, you miss, you hit, you hit. Um, so it's. It's tough, but anyway, what do I need here? So he's a skill three, you're a six, I need eights. Like it's not great. It's not great, Kevin. I do uh, I do have edge, though, but I don't know if I would use it here. All right, so I got it. So it's nine plus M, max 11. That's it, I 11 points of damage. All right, so we're gonna start with the, with the nine group here. <laughs> Let's see where that goes. Eight, so that's torso. Ooh. And that's going to be nine points in the torso. That's Enemy enough. That's a total destruction. That's enough. All right, so guys, there it is. The first kill in Battletech Destiny. Hmm. Uh, the Battlemaster just blazing down medium lasers, SRMs, into that damaged torso of the Wolverine. So just <laughs> right, in, right into the back of the dropship. <laughs> um, all right, so moving down the line here to number two in the initiative order is the Marauder. Uh, all I'm going to do is fire my AC-5. I want to recover some of my heat here. Uh, so I'm going to fire that. Oh, actually, I, I have nobody to shoot at because I don't think... Kevin, I don't think I can see the awesome through the Battlemaster. So that's it. I'm, I'm done shooting. So, Kevin, who's your number one? Warhammer. 
He's going to try to retaliate on that battle master. I think he has to. Yeah. Uh, so... He's first, also an elite, right? Yeah, first they're going to come the two PPCs. Do I have to make all my declarations? You do. You do have to... I mean, at least for this particular mech, you have to say, these are the weapons I'm firing, right? Yeah, so he's probably going to push the heat and fire um, both his PPCs and his lasers and SRMs. Everything, everything's okay. straight out of them. All right. Except for the short-range stuff. Okay. So, that will push his heat, but I think we need to push heat. So two PPCs, we'll start there. He's in medium range and he's elite. So it's going to be a similar two, four, five. he needs fives. He needs fives. All right. That's All right. a hit. So what, what kind two of... two PPCs. That's seven damage, Kevin. All right, let's see where that lands. A four. four. So that's right arm. So, <laughs> oh no. You could edge it. It's not what you want. I um, know. I so think... CT has five pips left. So if you hit six, seven, or eight, which you have a high percentage chance of doing, you would be internal. Yeah, I uh, think I have to edge it. Okay. I don't want to talk you into it, but I feel I like... I Right arm is just so... It's so... Right, then there's taken no damage. This is where I like this versus Alpha Strike because you do have that location... Oh, no! you got to be Wait. kidding me! Aren't the destiny rules for edge like you can't get the same roll twice? No, I don't think that's a uh, that's a that's not a real thing, Kevin. <laughs> is that just our house rule? That is well, that was <laughs> yeah for for the for the other thing. For, like, yes. Role play. Um, all right, so he takes seven ah. to the right arm, but you still have a whole other group to fire. I know. Oh crap! Dice down. Dice down. Um, so it's probably going to be the the same hit number. I think also you should track. I think he's at like. Over 14 damage at this point. Oh, shoot. You're right. So he's taken... Well, that was 7. He took 14. Uh, he took 18 points of damage so far. Yeah, it's a great call out. Yeah, yeah he's taken a lot. All right. So anyway, this is also same modifier. He's 5. So yeah. And how much two, damage Two is mediums that? and an SRM 6. So it's 6 plus M8. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty meaty. That's a hit. That's a hit. Can you roll that seven again? That's what you need. Right. Oh, well, I okay. guess first, right, the cluster confirmation. So 1d6 um, for the cluster. Yeah. All right, so nothing there. So it's just going to be six damage. Six damage. Oh, six. Looks like a ton. There it is. That's the torso. So, Kevin, you will be internal. Now, uh, internal, the way this works is when you get internal, guys, you have to roll... 2d6, and if you get an 8 or better, it counts as a critical hit. So, 2d6, Kev. Should I get that heat marked? So I don't He's up to it? 3 points. No, 2. Oh, oh, 2 points. I was going to say, holy smokes, man. Yeah, no, that's a lot. That's, that's like still shut down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, 3 is like, I think, yeah, you, you, have to, you have to roll to avoid a shutdown. It's not easy either. Yeah. So you need an 8 or better here to confirm the critical hits. This is very similar to Classic, and this is right out of the Destiny rulebook. And you get it. Okay, now, uh, I may is need to go... Multiples? No, it's just you only ever get one. Now, I, I have to go to the rulebook just to double check, but it's something like 1 is an ammo explosion, is 2 is a, a weapon... D6? Three, four is gyro, five, six is engine. Yes. Correct. Just 1d6. I want to know what the table says. Well, we're going to check it just to be sure. Now, uh, that is an ammo explosion. I do have machine gun ammo in the torso. Kevin, the ammo finder, he's back, guys! <laughs> he's back! Uh, so I'll just double check the, the rule book, but I'm pretty sure one is an ammo explosion. Guys, we will be right back. It was right. Kevin, the ammo king. Doing what he does best, that battle master destroyed. Kevin, how do you feel now? Better. I love this game. It's a good trade, Wolverine for Battle Master. For you, it's not a good trade for me. I mean, that thing, we were just talking about it. That battle master is vicious and close, nine damage. Uh, so, guys, turn five is coming right up here. Lots of carnage already. Um, you know, you're seeing the mechanics in action. These mechs are a lot more durable. Uh, and of course, that edge mechanic kind of fun. Although, Kevin, you did waste the edge on the arm, it still panned out for you. Uh, in the end. So guys, yeah. <laughs> turn five. Things are getting bloody. We'll see what happens. Turn five is coming right up. All right, guys, check it out. It is it is the turn of death, turn five. 
Um, so much has happened already. I'm surprised. I mean, this game definitely moves very quick. Uh, feels little, Kevin and I were talking, feels a little smoother, I think. Um, but let's talk about what happened here. So I rolled like garbage and in initiative. All my mechs are at the, basically the bottom of the order. Um, the Griffin continued his flank out there. He's looking at shots on that Warhammer. Um, I don't know if I want to overheat again. We'll see. Uh, the Marauder kind of moved over here, taking some cover, eyes down on that uh, on that Warhammer as well. And then my Thunderbolt moved up, not expecting uh, not expecting to have anybody right next to him. So I'm not sure if I'm going to turn and blast that Phoenix Hawk or focus fire that Warhammer down. But we'll see. So Kevin, what about you? What do you got going on here? Well, the Awesome decided to just plant his feet. He's dealing with heat. <clears throat> Similarly, the Warhammer's dealing with heat, but the Warhammer did move in a little bit closer. Yeah, just no TMM. Um, right. Neither have TMM, so it is what it is. It's open season for me. Um, remind me, though, this standstill is a minus two as well? Uh, minus one to hit, right? When okay. you're stationary, yeah, you get that minus one bonus okay. to your, yeah, basically your gunner And then the Phoenix it. Hawk did some parkour. He did a <laughs> jump jet over the reactor. I imagine he slid down that, totally. that side. Totally. And uh, planted himself right in short range there, right, to go face-to-face -face with that Thunderbolt. Mm. Maybe the Marauder. I don't know. I, I guess you can still see him. Yeah, can, I, I think so. Idea. I mean, we can come around and take a, a closer look here. But it looks to me it's like... He's got that arm. Yeah, yeah Thunderbolt. <laughs> just shooting around. Like, ah. right. <laughs> that is a, uh, so that is a custom, post, cu uh, custom post Thunderbolt there, Kevin. Oh yeah? yeah, I did some did some uh, modeling knife action. Dipped? No, yeah. yeah, it's normally pointing down exactly. Um, so that one I pointed up, I believe, um, I might've done some, I might've twisted his torso slightly too, but anyway, so speaking of, speaking of twisting my torso, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this, this Warhammer, uh, from the Griffin. So the Griffin at long range of the Warhammer, skill three, your Warhammer didn't move and my long range value is four. So I would need sevens to hit you. And the question is, do I want to overheat? I say yes. I'm doing it. LRM 10 and PPC. They're both going to need sevens to hit. I still have my edge. Feel good about it. All right, sevens. Here we go. We're going to start with the LRM. That is a miss. Not feeling good, Kevin. Not feeling good. I hope it's not one of those turns. Uh, the PPC. There we go. Um, so the PPC hits. That's four points of damage. Looking for location. That is a five. That is right leg. That's not what I wanted. Um, okay. <clears throat> Next in the order, number five is the Thunderbolt. So this is the interesting thing about initiative and uh, and doing it per pilot versus you know per force. Is I really would have loved to have seen what the Marauder could do to that Warhammer, and then of course decide what I want to do with the Thunderbolt. But the initiative sort of changes the dynamic of the game a little bit, which I like. Um, I don't particularly like it right now, but I think generally I like it. Uh, I think that Thunderbolt is going to try to melt that Phoenix Hawk. Um, so we're going to go with... Um, what range are we at, by the way? We're within three. Sure. So well, are we within three inches? Yeah. Okay, but not within one. No. Okay. Well, so, so the LRM-15 so, right? doesn't have a penalty at short, but it does have a penalty at point blank. These things would potentially matter here. So take a look and tell us, Kevin. I mean, the bases overlap in like a, within a one inch. Is mm. that, that going to make it point blank? You think it is point blank? It's like at oh, it's point, like... point 0.8 inches. Okay, so I could I could try to kick you also, Kevin, but I'm not. I want to just shoot all sorts of things at you. I'm going to fire the LRM-15 too, even though I take that penalty. Um, actually, no, I'm not. Man, I don't know what to do. All right, well, we're going to start with... Uh, I think I'm just going to... I am going to fire the LRM-15. Forget it. I'm doing it, Kevin. It's happening. Fine, so the, fine I'm doing it. Uh, so I'm a three. You're a three. That's a six. I need an eight with the LRM-15. Here we go. I get it. All right, so this is a uh, two plus M. Nothing. So two points of damage. That goes to your torso. Now, here comes the big group. So the big group does not have a point blank um, modifier, it's zero. So I'm gonna need a six to hit here. This is the big one, guys. This is what you save your edge for. All right, so that hits. Now this is a six plus M with a max of seven. 
So just six points of damage. Where does that go? That also goes to the center torso. That is what I needed. Is it enough to penetrate? Yes. Ooh, I don't like it. I Kevin. love my heavy lights. I don't like. I know you do. Like beefy it's, mediums. It's, it's your beefy mediums. It's so disgusting. All right. So Thunderbolt is done. He uh, builds up three points of heat, but has three dissipation, so he's clean. The uh, actually number four is up. Who's number four in the initiative order? So is that the, the awesome? The awesome. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm gonna respect the heat. I think. <laughs> respect the heat. <laughs> respect the heat. And I think he's really got one choice here. No, oh, he's got multiple choices. It's got one choice. Shoot a Donegal guard. I think I'm gonna go for the Marauder. So two PPCs. That's got it. it. Alright, uh, so two PPCs. Now that's gonna build up six, two points of heat, is it? Or three? I don't remember. Seven. Uh nothing. Oh, he's gonna build up nothing. So he's still gonna retain yeah, his heat. He's then. holding that third PPC back. Got it. So he's not gonna dissipate, but he's not gonna build anything. Um No, he'll dissipate one heat. Oh, he, 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 he's, he's dissipating about five cents. Holy smokes. Yeah. Woo. That's meaty. It's an awesome. He's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do, what do you need to hit? A seven. one? A seven. Yeah. All right. So you nab it. All right. Um, and you're going be... for the Marauder, right? Yeah. Did you count cover and all that too? He doesn't have it. Okay. Oh, because you're elevated. You're the seeing elevation, down. Okay. I can see those cankles. The Marauder. <laughs> yeah. The Marauder is very tall too. Um, all right. So rolling for location. Now my Marauder is going to need to make a piloting check also, guys. Six. So that's to the torso. So seven's not going to penetrate, but he's only going to have one pip left on that CT. Uh, I'm just going to make my pilot. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to make my pilot in check because you could hit me with other stuff. Yeah, you wait. But seven <laughs> yeah, damage, wait. please. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mark that off. Uh, and then quick. we'll go to number three. Okay, so that's the Marauder. I made the executive decision because that Warhammer really only took a leg shot. I think I had better odds on, on hurting the awesome. We're going to go for Broke here. Two PPCs and the AC5. Uh, so I need a two. Two plus, I'm at long range, so I, I need a six here, guys. Starting with the two PPCs. All right, that's a hit. Looking for location. Be good to me. Six, that's torso. All right, so seven points to the awesome's torso. Uh, and then we've got the AC5, looking for a six to hit. I get it. Location is a four. Uh, so that is right arm, takes two pips. So, so far, uh, the Phoenix Hawk needs to make a piloting check, right? Or he only took six, did he? He took six, that's so right. he does not. Yeah. Uh, but the Marauder and the Awesome both need to make piloting checks so far. All right, so guys, we are continuing down the initiative order. Um, Kevin, what's up next? Awesome just got stripped in the torso. Yeah, well, you know. Well, these, internally out, though. These things happen. Um, so are we at the Phoenix Hawk, I believe? We are indeed, yep. Alright, so he's gonna do that Phoenix Hawk stuff and unload medium lasers. <laughs> he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna do Phoenix Hawk things. <laughs> his arms are just gonna come on fire. Oh my gosh. Um, so he's lighting you up. And this is going for the Thunderbolt. Um, yeah, he is. Okay. I think, because the Marauder's like just out of short. Okay. So I'm gonna go with the safe, safer bet here. I will accrue no heat, which is nice. Not overheating yet. All right. Maybe I should. I don't know. You are almost dead. True. I am almost dead. <laughs> <clears throat> Why not? YOLO, right? That would ruin his TMM. That would make him more dead. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Mostly yeah. dead. I mean, that that is true. So, you know, may, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Battle Elix is confused. I would I would actually maybe probably for the three damage against the it's Thunderbolt that's not really damage. damaged. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. So first we'll start with the mediums. So, and you're going for the Thunderbolt, right? You said? Yeah. Okay. So one just a four. Yeah, that's it. Oh well he jumped. So Oh six. Six. Good good memory. Please. I think he's going to edge it. All right. Remember, you can also edge my hit rolls at you. Just 
throwing that out there. I know. All right, so you get it. The edge pays off. And this will be for four damage. All right. All right, so that is right arm takes four. And then those... Almost a floater. And those machine guns. Same Nita a six. All right, four, yeah. Yeah. All right, it's going to be two damage. Five, it's right five leg. Five to the right leg. So Warhammer... Uh, we'll be going after that Thunderbolt as well, taking okay. advantage of medium range. Got it. He will just be firing, though, his laser and SRM-6s. Got it. The heat. The heat's a killer. Heat. Minus one shooting, I believe. Minus one penalty to firing ranged weapons. Yeah, so minus one to the mod. <clears throat> um, so two, three... Four, five, six. Okay. You got it. You got it, Kev. I don't even want to look. Thunderbolt. All right, so this is the, uh, I'll do the, the missile. Okay. No good. So just for six damage. Uh, so six more will blow that arm right off, uh, and I will lose. Yeah, he's got a pilot check, and I lose my lar uh, my large laser. It's ugly. I don't like it. I like it. Um, are you done shooting? Yeah, that was it. That, uh, yeah, that was it. What did the awesome shoot at? I don't remember. The water. Oh, so right. We both have to make pilot checks. That is correct. All right, so I have two mechs, and why don't I start? So my marauder needs to roll a four or better. Uh, Same thing my awesome. Skill three. So here we go. Looking good this time. All right. The Thunderbolt needs to roll a five because it's a uh, worse piloting. <laughs> um, so. Oh no, Gavin. <laughs> Might be time for death from above. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know what? I am going to uh... I'll probably spend it. I mean, I don't want to though. It's so critical. Like that's going to be what, like two damage for him, three damage for him. 65 yeah 65 is going to take damage. three three points of damage oh guys i don't know what to do do i want to edge and re-roll it's, it's automatically round up it's not round normally for the 30 ton damage yeah or divide by 30 yeah um all right i think i am going to just take the fall so i want to roll uh, see if the mech warrior takes damage i need a five all right Whew. That's that's the big one. So, uh, Kev, you get to roll three locations. A three. All right. So that is a another right another arm that arm. transfers inward to the CT, or just the T. <laughs> Seven. Another, another T. T. And, and left arm. Left arm. All right. <laughs> kind of <cold. laughs> All right, and then your piloting roll here need a four, yeah? Yep, for the awesome. All right. All right, so Thunderbolt goes down, takes some damage. Marauder still on his feet, Griffin flanking. I mean, this is getting uh, getting brutal here. So I'm not sure who's got the upper hand. That Marauder pretty banged up, Thunderbolt missing an arm now. Did the, the Marauder made his pilot? Yep, yep, rolled an 11 there. So Kev, I think we're moving on to turn six here. It's about to get crunch time. Yeah, so far this is trending just like a normal game of uh, Alpha Strike or Classic would. You know, I feel like in terms of the, the time it takes to watch mechs go down, but yeah. I feel like the time I'm spending on the turns is probably a little bit less, but um, we'll see. So guys, anyway, turn six is coming up. Stay tuned. Here we are, turn six. In the wake of destruction, two battle mechs down, one from each lance. Donegal Guard getting sort of hemmed in here by this advancing Phoenix Hawk. Um, so it was sort of a mixed bag with initiative. Uh, my, my Griffin lost uh, out and had to make the first move. So uh, he actually started banking in a little bit, moving up to those rocks. Uh, he is suffering a heat penalty, so didn't quite get to move as far as he liked. Um, also, actually, I listed his TMM as, as zero, but he actually has a TMM of one. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Uh, and then the Marauder backing up here is... Looking at the Phoenix Hawk, but he may torso twist and shoot someone else. We'll see. Uh, and that Thunderbolt, he got completely outmaneuvered. 
Um, oh, actually, he was the one that lost initiative. So he uh, he got completely outmaneuvered. Yeah. He was number six in the in the order. Um, well, so you know he had to move first. So yeah, so that's that. So Kevin, you, you're uh, you're doing things with your Phoenix Hawk. Pretty typical of you. Yeah, he did like a you know two inch jump just to get that extra TMM. Mm. So um, he's dirty. cool riding that penalty because he isn't point blank and in the rear of that Thunderbolt. So yeah. He may not last though. That Marauder is definitely beaming him down. Um, but the Warhammer planted, he's just going to try to unload again. And the Awesome moved ahead a little bit to get into medium range with that Thunderbolt, but yeah. still kind of using the um, reactor as cover from that uh, Griffin down there. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, so rear shots, let's talk about that for a minute. So there's no rule in Destiny about getting hit in the rear. At least I couldn't find one. Uh, there are, interestingly enough, rear-mounted weapons, like the Battlemaster explicitly has rear-mounted lasers. But um, what I did was I sort of took something out of the Alpha Strike book, right? The, the extra um, damage, right? So I, I translated that and, and basically said that's, you know, it's two points of damage, right, in, in Destiny land. So... <laughs> Uh, when you shoot, uh, the first weapon group that you shoot at a mech does two extra points of damage, right? Um, the only exception is if you hit the head, uh, then you don't get the extra two points of damage because the heads are so... Only torso, well, I thought it was only torso, right? Well, I was counting it for legs and arms as well when, when, I, when we did the play test, but, you know, maybe we do, maybe that's right. Maybe only just the torso. Uh, actually, probably better. Makes more sense that way. I think so. Because in Alpha Strike, there's no location, so that's yeah. kind of why it's bland. All right, well, it's been written here, uh, so I like that. So if you hit the Especially torso, when I'm in your rear, it makes more sense. <laughs> I, right, less chance for you to do damage. I love, I love this rule. Uh, so okay, makes sense though, right? I agree with you. Uh, so my Thunderbolt, he is, uh, he unfortunately has to go first. But it could be any of the first hits of the torso. Anything, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the right, the first weapon group of even that machine gun could be the machine guns. Uh, right, exactly. So, here we go. Thunderbolt is going to be firing at the Warhammer, Kevin. Now, I am down a, um, down a large laser. So, I'm going to do LRM-15 and then my, uh, all my medium range stuff at so that large Warhammer. Large laser on the left arm? Large laser says right arm here. Oh, that's right. I, I, I'm, I thought I, for some reason I knocked off your left arm. Oh, that's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the model and I'm, like, doing, like, the... You know the thing that kids do when they try to figure out their left and their right. Like I'm saying, am I, I, am I confused? What's what's happening here? Uh, so anyway, LRM fifteen. What do I need? Three. You didn't move. I'm at medium range. I need a three, Kevin. What's my LRM fifteen? If I miss this, I still have my edge. So I have it for for both the Phoenix. No, the Phoenix Hawk's the one that used it. I think right. The Phoenix Hawk he used it for that medium laser last time. And the Warhammer used it as well. And the Austin's the only one that still has it. Yeah, that's what I believe that is correct. All right, here we go. All right, so I hit. LRM 15 uh, does 2 plus M. So that's going to be 5. It's a full house. So let me roll for location here. First, the two point cluster is hitting the 10, which is the left arm. And the three point cluster hitting the left leg. Like, not what I want here, guys. This Warhammer is just a pretty clean build. Ooh, all right, so now the big group. This is the six plus M group. Uh, I'm gonna need a five to hit. Oh, Do I edge this, Kevin? I feel like I have to. Um, here we go. Still hang on that edge? Yeah, I think I gotta use it though, because, um, all right, hits. Because I have bad feelings about that Phoenix Hawk in my rear. Uh, no one likes the Phoenix Hawk in their rear. So I have been known to to find them. Yes, we've got mechs from behind. Uh, so this is a six plus M. So it's an eight in total, but I max at seven. So I have seven points of damage. So first is six points of damage. That's going to go to the torso. Finally, finally, and then that one point is going to go to the left arm again. Uh, I guess if I can rip off a PPC, I'll be happy, but it just doesn't seem to be doing enough quickly enough. So, I think with the awesome, he will... He's gonna go for the Thunderbolt. <clears throat> All right, going for the Thunderbolt. Unloading everything. So, he's getting a full barrage of PPC. 
So we'll start with the single PPC first. Okay. Uh, they are at medium range, so that, that will be a two, three, five. Oh, that's it? Oh my god. Seven, yeah, I'm going to stick with the five. Times are desperate. All right, so single PPC hits. All right, so four to the torso. Torso, now the double. This is the big one, Kev. It's looking for a six, seven, eight. There it is. Oh man, so 13, uh, 11 points. 11 points 11 to the CT. To the CT. Uh, so two, four, six, eight, nine. That's two pips internal, Kevin. That could be a critical hit. Do you wanna do you wanna roll the confirmation here for us? Let's see what you got. All right, so no critical hit. You needed an eight or better. Now, do you do have edge, Kevin? He's he's, he's poised. I am poised. I mean, it could be game changing. It could be a total whiff. Yeah, it's just a critical. Just a critical. I, I mean, I I, I mean, I, there will be more chances, and yeah, I don't I don't Eight's think it's not a good. It's not it's not a good edge worthy number. Yeah, I I'll agree. Probably get jumbo to fit anyway. You know? <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Yikes. Yeah, so 11 points, two in. Two in, so he's got one, two, three, four, five pips in the torso Guess left. Who's next? Uh, the Warhammer? Phoenix Hawk. Oh no. So I think he's this just was... gonna double down on the, that, that opportunity he has there. So yep. point blank, rear of Thunderbolt. He's gonna go again for two mediums and a machine gun. Okay. Still no heat. What a great, what a great chassis. Uh, <laughs> you love the Phoenix Hawk. I do. It's your fave. So we'll start with the two mediums. Okay. Uh, he jumped, so you have that going for you. Okay. So three, four, five, six. It's not in four, five, six. That's it. Yeah. Wow. That's it. It's still kind of hard. Yeah, it's it's a little for under fifty percent. Yeah, pretty <laughs> blind. Yeah, for it's a little but under fifty percent. I needed my blind. TMM. So. There's All that. Right, get it. Now, Two this mediums. is a four point cluster here, a four point group, I should say. CT. I feel like I saw that six pop. Uh, but, Kev, that's four points of damage. So, he has one pip left in the structure, but that is a critical hit. So, why don't you roll that up for us? You need an eight or better. That'll happen after the. Oh, break. wait a minute. He's dead. Right? Because you get two critical. more points of damage for hitting the rear. So, it's actually six points. Kevin, you've been known. To tear through some mechs from the rear, and <laughs> now can I change targets, or is that already pre? No, that is yeah. You declared all your groups in the shots, um, and Very so nice. your machine guns just rip through whatever is left. Yeah, <laughs> just lighting up the armor. Uh, it's like crying to the yeah. cockpit. You hurt me so bad. I'm gonna catch you back. He's just like shooting. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so the Phoenix Hawk is done. All right. Oh goodness! More All right. appropriately, the thunderbolt is done. Yeah, that, that one. very, very, very funny, <laughs> Kevin. Um, so we're on to number three. That's me. That's the Griffin. That's me, Kev. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot at the uh, the Warhammer. I believe that's what I'm gonna do. Not much else going for him. Yeah. Um, I could shoot at the Phoenix Hawk, but I don't think I want to. There's gonna be a mod, there's gonna be cover, and, and even move. I know, I know, it's true. The Warhammer's got beaten up pretty bad yeah. by this round. I'm gonna overheat again with this Griffin. Not what I wanna do, but I feel like it's necessary. It's a critical round. It's a critical round. Uh, so Griffin into Warhammer, I'm gonna need- has two pips on the CT. I need fives, right? I need fives? No, I need any more than that, because I'm at long range. Um, oh, I need fives with the LRM, sevens with the PPC. All right, so here we go. We're coming over to the gold mine here to roll. Some peasants in there mining. Uh, made a Warcraft joke in the last uh, last battle report. I'm not sure anybody got that. Might be too old. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna start with the LRM. Need fives. Got it. All right, so it's two pips of damage. Uh, two different locations. First location. Freaking right leg. Other location, torso. So one to right leg, one to right torso. Leg will go in. Ooh, it's exciting. All right, so get a potential critical hit on that right leg. Let's check it out. Nothing. 
All right, now the PPC. So, I need a seven, yeah? Here we go, guys. Come on, PPC. Mm. Now, now, now. Oh Knocking gold over. Now, does my Griffin still have his edge? He does. He's the last one uh, here that has edge. I have to, I think I, I mean, like you said, critical. Well, got an edge. Critical round. We're going for it. Need a seven. Oh my God, double ones again, Kevin. What are the odds, guys? So one thing we're doing here, if we're, we're playing with like the stock 024, like, you know, range mods. Uh, and it's interesting, you know what I'm talking about? Like where we normally play with one, two, three, or zero, you know. And like, you can really, like the gradient on range feels so weird. Like if you close the medium, it's like substantially easier oh, yeah. to hit, the you know? Yeah, versus like, I'd almost rather play with like, you know, your pilot should be like, you know, four, fives and sixes and, and the range should be less of a factor, but I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Um, next up is the Marauder. You know who I'm going for. How's that Phoenix Hawk doing? Stripped in the middle, yeah? Yeah. Otherwise, everything else is fresh. Yeah, I feel like I want to go... He's got ammo in there. Yeah, I mean, I could, Kevin, fire. Um, I'm going to go with medium lasers and AC5. I'm going to try to bleed off some heat here. So... <clears throat> I hope I don't regret this, guys. Here we go. Starting with the AC5. Uh, we're just outside of short range. So it's a zero. I'm a two. I need a five. Here we go. All right, so AC, AC5 hits. That's eight, that is torso. Crunch. Two pips, right? Yep. Uh, so, still alive, however, I do get a critical hit, nothing. Medium lasers. I feel like you have to do that critical afterward. You think you roll them at the end? Medium lasers oh, yeah. hit. No critical dissolve, damage resolves at the end, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So really, I guess the order wouldn't matter, but you're right, the critical would matter. Um, after the turn. All right, here we go. So I hit looking for location. Come on, I need a six, seven, or eight. All right, so that is four points of damage to the right arm. Well, you get a critical chance in the right arm. You could knock out some some weaponry. Eight, I got one. All right. Is there uh well, let's see what I get. Ammo so, in the right arm? So no. six, there's no ammo in the right <laughs> arm, right. Six might like blow the limb off. So uh, I get to pick which weapon, no, it's just it's just a, uh, all weapon hits um, and one is an ammo. So I get to pick which weapon um, it <laughs> is. All the weapons are in the right arm. Um, what's in a group? The two medium lasers? Yeah, the two medium lasers are the most juicy. That's the four damage. That's what I'm going to take out. One of the medium lasers, and that will disable the whole group. Um, the whole tick there. So, that's, that's something, but I cannot believe I didn't destroy it. Guys, I'm in a 3v2. This is getting, getting tense. So, um, Kevin, you still have to shoot with something, right? <sighs> the Warhammer. So, he's going to fire two PPCs. Ooh. Three, seven, I think I'm at a six. Okay. All, all said and done. All right. Seven, but then I drop it for the standing still. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here like staring death in the face. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I just overheat to high hell with the Marauder and try to kill that Phoenix Hawk? I should have did it. Should have did it, guys. Whew. Just connects it. I wish you would have missed. Can't hit the legs. We'll keep it in effect. Oh, you're, you're playing it, Kev? Yeah. Kev, Kev's going crazy. We're trying new rules right here, live. Live on DFA. Can't see the legs. <sighs> That's a right arm. You rip off the right arm, and there's a critical chance in that center torso. You want to roll that up? Oh my god, it's a critical hit, Kevin. So 1d6. Critical hit, engine. It's an engine hit. Ooh. It's an engine hit, guys. Hot. Yeah, things are getting bad. Um, okay, so Mech takes some uh some serious critical damage here. Uh my my CT has been uh been stripped and I'm internal and I'm missing my right arm. The only thing remaining is this AC5. Um crazy times, Kevin. Okay, so pilots, I think 
Well, my Marauder, Marauder needs to check. check. And then my Warhammer needs to check. Yeah, and my Thunderbolt's dead, so it doesn't matter. All right, so for your... Simultaneous? All right. So I need... I need to be a four, I think. So I think he, I don't think he took more than... Yeah, I need to do the same. Here we go. You get yours. Close. It's close, Kev. So guys, if you remember our morale rules from Alpha Strike, which I really like them, um, you know, the way we were doing it is double your skill in Alpha Strike, and then if you take a critical hit, it's one. But if it's an engine hit or a gyro hit, I would count that as a two, right? Because in Alpha, yeah. we just hit engine. Um, and then, you know, if you were shot at, it's an additional one. Well, here, since we have piloting and gunnery, you don't double your skill. You just sum your piloting and gunnery, and then you add the appropriate mods. So if my Marauder were in forced withdrawal or were take, had taken crippling damage, I guess to say, right? I would have had to have rolled because I took the engine hit. I was shot at. That's a plus three and then a five. So I would need to beat an eight, which is pretty high. Um, but thankfully, I don't need to do that quite yet. Phoenix Hawk does. Phoenix Hawk does. So Phoenix Hawk is at half his internal. Okay. So he needs a... He got shot at. He took eight weapon damage, and he needs a nine. He needs a nine, okay. Now, if you fail, that means the, the Phoenix Hawk has to sprint to your table edge. If you pass, he just has to move one inch closer to your table edge. Um, so he will have to sprint and turn seven back to his table edge. So that's a, that's a big win. So, guys, it is the end of turn six. We are moving on to turn seven, but things are looking grim for the Donegal Guard here. Uh, following in the footsteps of their uh, their forefathers, the fourth, uh, not quite able to unseat Marek. But we'll see, guys. Anything goes. Those Marek mechs are banged up. Turn seven coming right up. All right, turn seven. Is this the end? I don't know, Kevin. We'll see. Um, we so got our gold. Yeah, I mean, you guys are doing pretty well over there. Uh, Phoenix Hawk and Force Withdrawal, it's, it's like a two and a half on two. Uh, Marauder won all of the, the big prize for initiative, so we got to move last. The Griffin somewhere at the other end of the order. Uh, I'll talk about what I did real quick here. So the Griffin moved a little bit out on the flank, um, still hobbled by that heat penalty. My Marauder now fresh and clean, uh, backing up out of range, trying to get out of that 12-inch range of that Warhammer. But I, I have a feeling somebody's getting baked this turn, and it might be that, uh, that Griffin. Kev, what about you? What do you got going on? Well, they're awesome, and the Warhammer advanced while the Phoenix Hawk basically sprinted back and withdraw. So we got a nice echelon forming yeah. for the moment. Yeah. Um, debating, like you said, whether I'm not going to bake that griffin. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Um, so you get to shoot first. You start with the Warhammer, I believe, is at the, the bottom yeah, of Yeah, Warhammer is going to start for sure. Okay. He... He's going to go after the, the griffin, and he mm. is going to heat things up. So he's gonna he's gonna fire PPCs, okay, medium lasers, SRM six. Yeah, I regret I regret getting into medium range. Um, I immediately regret this decision. I immediately regret it, but you know we'll see. Especially so, with the heat, should just cooled off somewhere. Yeah, I, I really should have. Oh well. You let go of that miniature. That's true. It took, so, my, it took my finger off the chest piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it is what it is, but... So, we're in medium range. So he's going to have gunnery two, so it's going to be four, just a five. Just a five, and just I have no, no cover from that position. Okay. This is the, for the double PPCs first. All I can hope is the, you just starting with the fireworks. have awful luck here. That's what I just hope. Don't you put that hate on me. Mm. Where is the seven damage going? God, it's just so ugly to the torso. So I got to take a look at the record sheet. Kevin, that is stripped. Okay. Now for medium lasers and SRM6, same deal. Only sixes. All right. I'm going to bring the record sheet over here. Um, sevens, two. right? Four. Or sixes. Why was I saying that before? No, it's just fives. Just five? Oh, okay. Yeah, medium range. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You're skilled, too. Oh, any luck? You have edge. no edge. You have no edge. Oh, wow. Pew. So you deflect 
<laughs> with that giant with that giant pauldron on his yeah, shoulder. Yeah, just a salvo of SRM coming flying, slamming into that uh warehouse over here. Building there, yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, in retaliation, Kevin, I'm gonna fire back with this Griffin. Um, he is going for that uh that Warhammer, and once again, I am going for broke. I am building up heat, I'm doing everything I can here. Three, four, six, seven with the heat penalty. So. Who's this? This is Griffin into the Warhammer. Uh, so need sevens. Here we go. Do I want to fire both? I guess I do. Even PP. with the heat penalty. Even wow. with the heat penalty. Here we go. PPC. Mm. Can I get another one? Sevens. That's CT. So four points to the crit. CT. All right. Need an eight or better, guys. Nothing. All right, LRM 10, I need a seven to hit. So again, he's skill three. He's got a TMM of one, that's four, and then plus two, four. Oh no, wait a minute, it's not plus two for medium range. I only need a five. LRM's doing doing real good here. So I only need a five, Kevin. Oh no, the same thing as you. Can you believe it? Ugh. All right, so the, the LRMs, I, my LRMs like intercept your SRMs in midair. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, that's that. I, I had the crit chance, but nothing doing. Now, Kevin, you get to finish off here with your awesome, and then we move to my yeah. Marauder. So I guess the awesome is going to go for the Griffin. Okay. I think that's necessary. All right. So. Stole your dice. Sorry about that. He's unloading everything. He's gonna do it. He's got. He's I'm gonna up. do it. Um, that it. reminds me. I'm gonna. <laughs> gonna do it. All right. So <laughs> it's getting ugly here. So we'll start with a single PPC. This is a similar, just a five. So okay. It's needed at the end of the day. And remind me, I do need to check for shutdown at the end of the turn for the Griffin. Uh, Oof, that's it. That's the double barrel right there. That's the single one. Oh, that's the single one. Yeah. Four. Four. So that's an so that's a arm. Right arm. Okay. Now for the double. Oh man. I'm gonna I'm gonna edge it. Oh, you have the edge. He also oh, has the edge. Oh, he's got the edge. And he there hits it, it. There it is. There it is. All right. Well, that mech that mech is, mech mech is mech sky mech high. Mech. So that mech had nothing left on the torso. Dual PPCs just bore straight through the engine shielding. That pilot ejects and that griffin is destroyed. So now we're left with the lone Donegal Guard Marauder, the 20th Donegal here. Uh, he is going for his final salvo against that Warhammer. And we are, Kevin, firing both the PPCs and that AC5 again. Is he uh, down some weapons? Oh, shoot, you're right. He is down weapons. The whole right. arm's gone. Well, I can fire my AC5. So, what do I need? I need a two, three, seven. Just get it. Can I get a six, seven, or eight? This is going to be big, this guys. This is the Warhammer? This is the Warhammer. I need a six, seven, or eight. Torso shot will put the mech in withdrawal. A six. Warning. That's what I wanted. So, two more points to the Warhammer, and guys critical hit and I don't get it <laughs> well that's the end of turn seven guys the griffin goes up in smoke the thunderbolt destroyed the battle master cored out the marauder limping away arm destroyed it's bloody we'll see what happens stay tuned All right, guys, here we are. It is the battlefield of Fester. Uh, the Donegal Guard absolutely routed by the Tamarind Chevaliers over there. Uh, finally, finally painted by Kevin. Uh, but this was a great battle, I thought. Great pitch battle, and it was very reminiscent of Classic with sort of the speedy elements of Alpha Strike mixed in. I really enjoyed this system. Uh, we'll talk about that in the after action report. But again, wow, what a battle. Uh, just a brutal critical hit on this Battlemaster.
Thunderbolt just waiting through fire in the middle, but finally succumbing to that rear shot from the Phoenix Hawk. That poor Warhammer getting just blistered early in the game, and the Marauder fleeing off the battlefield, arm dangling, <laughs> dragging behind it. Uh, so this was a good one, guys. So stick around. We'll talk a little bit about the system and the game all coming up right now in the After Action Report. So there you have it, uh, an exciting Battletech Destiny battle report in the bag. So that was, um, as you guys saw in the animations, it was about 7750 BV. Um, and we yeah. did, you know, we basically picked some mechs and then kind of scaled up and down. Um, cause we wanted based to, on what I had painted, basically. Right, based on, based on <laughs> Kevin's force, and I, I, wanted to, I wanted to field the Donegal Guard, so we kind of picked some, some things to match. But, you know, that's, that's a pretty good fight. You know, 8000 BV is a pretty, you know, pretty hefty match. Um, and overall, I think it felt balanced from a force perspective. I didn't feel like any mechs were overpowered or too brutal. I mean, the awesome was nasty, yeah. but the thing also costs a fortune, you know, it's mm -hmm. like 1605 BV or whatever. And in this era, that's, you know, that's a lot, right? Considering it's like 300 points more than the Warhammer and, yeah. and things like that. Well, you get what you pay for. You got what you paid for. That thing was brutal. I mean, I mean just three PPCs is nothing to be yeah. sad about. Right, and when you can land two of them in one spot, you know. I think I think that was the ultimately that awesome was the the, the deciding factor. I the kill, the killer. I think if you would have pressed the attack on that awesome, you could have turned it sooner because you, you you. I switched off. You stripped his armor early on, and then you switched off, switched and he off. was just kind of like, I can live with this. I can, choo, yeah, choo, yeah. Choo. <laughs> oh well. Um, but I, I was honestly, I mean, I got spooked by that Warhammer because he had much yeah. like the Battlemaster, he had that big medium range group, you know, yeah. was doing like six plus, you know, M or whatever. Yeah, he can heat up quick, but it was a lot, it's a lot of, it was like a seven damage and then a six plus missiles to throw out. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's got diversity. Griffin was an underperformer for me. Um, yeah. I was hoping for more, like more, you know, sort of skirmish type out on the flank sniping. He didn't connect a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, long range is hard. And Yeah, it's harder. Yeah. Right? With the mods, it's harder. It's you know. a four, and then you, you know. Yeah. But the Wolverine wouldn't have lasted, you know. Yeah. He went down pretty early. Yeah, well, I mean, Wolverines do, right? I mean, he just kind of ran in and tanked some shots. I saw that coming. Game. Right when they got, like, kind of their, they eyed each other up. I was like, I could just sprint in at you and try to get in medium range, but I'd probably take a lot of damage on the way in. So right. I just decided to pile on that battle master i'm glad i did because that battle master if we didn't take him out that round with the ammo he would have melted me <laughs> dude the ammo hit i cannot like of like that battle you were talking about uh, scary the battle master would have been really uh, scary right right and it's costed about 100 bb less than the i think awesome. you were doing what it was like nine it was a nine damage the dude, one nine plus m i think it is a max of like 11 or something yeah. or 13 even it was it's like insanity yeah. so even just one more round on the table would have been devastating. Devastating, yeah, devastating. Because right. we were right in medium range at that point. Mm -hmm. But so I survived. I'm glad. Yeah, pulled out it, a win. It, you pulled out a win, and it was a close one. You know, I think. Uh, I mean, you had two mechs in force withdrawal. I only had one mech left on the table, but you know, it was pretty messed up. Basically, yeah. almost in withdrawal. No objectives. So this was just a straight up fight. So yeah. that made it different. We hadn't done that in a while. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Um, you know, from a, from a mechanics perspective, I thought it was pretty smooth. There weren't, there weren't anything that came up where we were like, what do we do for this? You know? Yeah. We, Even still learning a lot of the rules that we've kind of developed in this, it went, it's pretty intuitive. You know, it's pretty much everything you already know from Destiny, everything yeah. from Alpha Strike just blended. And the classic, best of both, right. You know? Yeah. And classic. I mean, if you're familiar with the, with the classic system and the weapons and things like that, I mean, this is all, you know, it's all, it's the same max, right? Yeah. You know? Um, your mechs have the same weapons. Those weapons are meaningful. And I, I think that's the the big impact that I, that makes it a little bit better than Alpha Strike. Well, probably a lot better than Alpha Strike yeah. for me is, <laughs> the, you know, I, I still see this being difficult to field like, you know, maybe not. Maybe it won't be so bad. It, there's a lot of prep work, right, to, to set up the cards and really pick your forces. Right. But once you have that, 
The cards are pretty much, they give you everything you need. There's not a whole lot of rule lookups because you're kind of going yeah. off a lot of that core alpha strike right. stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, and so I mean, cool. right. You the only way to do lookups for was criticals. A critical hit. Which so are easy, to, for that. easy mm -hmm. to commit to memory. I mean, it's like, right, you know, yeah. one is ammo, two is weapon, you know, three, four gyro, five, six engine, you know. I mean, it's but like, having the flavor of weapons back, that makes it pretty cool. They feel so different, right? Yeah. Like, even an LRM versus a PPC, like, vastly different right. in terms of your capabilities. Um, like the Wolverine versus Griffin. Like, in Alpha Strike, they're... they're you know, right. It's two, hard two, to tell two, those fifty fives yeah. apart. You know, mm -hmm. right? That's exactly right. <laughs> um, but this, it was like the Wolverine's back. You know, that, I if, love the Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Second yeah. favorite to the Phoenix Hawk. Oh man, and, and maybe I, not. I don't know. They, they were always my two. Yeah, but you'd feel them on that. That all, all we need is a Wolfhound and a Raven on the table, and we'll be in heaven. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that's like that's like your pro lance right there. Look out. Uh, but yeah, I mean I, I was really happy with it. I mean this was the Fun. first real. You know where we really grilled it through you know end to end and there were no hiccups you know it worked out pretty well um we did have that one little thing where we where we sort of added on to force withdrawal and we talked about cover too um but i think yeah. that makes sense yeah i think that was they were all good ads i agree i agree so overall i liked it guys i want to know what you think yeah. uh you know was it cool was it was it exciting to see you know sort of that that sort of semi-classic flavor back um, or, you know, are you like, what is this craziness? Make sure we get a shot of the card too up close. Yeah, I will. I will. And, uh, you know, if we get, if we get some positive feedback, you know, no doubt, uh, we'll, we'll provide some materials on this. Um, at least, you know, some of the basic cards available and then maybe, you know, on Patreon, we'll, we'll build some digital tools around, you know, card catalogs and things yeah. like that for you guys to, to build and print your forces. But, I liked it. That was cool. And I'm looking forward to trying cool. vehicles. You know, vehicles have a record sheet similar. You know, they, they look at the classic, but just sort of scaled down pips. Um, and you could really incorporate infantry platoons pretty easily, too, because they have the conversion rules yeah. from personal scale damage to mech scale damage. Um, you know, I mean, you know how I feel about infantry, but it would be kind of cool because you could run, like, you could have missions with, like, five-man, like, you know, special, like, black yeah. ops teams that have to go <laughs> in your upside-down dropship and... Dropping sniper squads in all the forests. Right. <laughs> <laughs> from your Maxim transports. Yes, I love those. <laughs> oh, God help me. Um, well, I don't know. That's all I got. Yeah. And I mean, the fact is we made it simple because we just had Succession Wars tech. So I'm interested to see how clan tech converts into Destiny format. You know? So they have a bunch of clan invasion stuff in the book. Um, and they have a bunch of the weapons in there. A lot of the more, like, uh, you know, what I call the wackier weapons are not in there. Um, but converting them is fairly straightforward. So for the yeah. ones that aren't Once in they're there, on the card, I, I'd be fine. I just worry if any of them have, like, particular rules with, like, re-rolls or... So, it's, yeah. You know, happen. clusters, locations, that type of stuff. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen anything. Uh, they do have rules for, for LBX or LB. Yeah, the LB, like, you know, 10X. It's probably and all just, that like, MMMMM. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of M's. Um, they do have Ultras in there. They have Case. They have AMS. So all of those rules are in there. So a lot of the, that stuff, like the core stuff that you cool. play with, is all there, which is really neat. Some of the inner sphere, like lost tech weapons, aren't in there. But again, like it's once you understand the formula for converting the ranges and things, it's very simple. Um, and we'll probably, you know, again, if we want to take this to the next level, I'm ready. I'm ready. I like it. I enjoyed it. You know, I think yeah. it it blends what I like about all the systems. I think so too. Yeah, uh, I had a couple couple conversations with guys on this, and I, and I said the exact same thing. It's like all the things I really like about Classic, which is like, you know, mech construction and, you know, locations and, you know, the differences in the weapons. Like, I want my Rifleman 3N to feel different than a 4D. You yeah. know, I don't want them to be the same mech. Um, Even just yeah. having the piloting and gunnery back, too. That's another one. You know, yeah. good shooters, good piloting. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. And mechs falling down, right? That's always fun. The risk of like blacking yeah. out in your cockpit, like that stuff's hilarious. Um, hilarious when it happens to your. I'll know that too. I feel it didn't happen, but it's it seems a lot easier for blackouts to occur in this because your pilot, you know, it it's a it's when you see the rules for it, it and there's not a whole lot of room for, for right. pilot hits. Right. So we use the condition monitor from Destiny, right, and all the rules out of Destiny for that. So basically, when you fall, you take three boxes of damage. Um, and all the pilots are built around a strength two condition monitor. Uh, monitor. So we did talk about, and we do have sort of 
percolating uh, rules around like if you wanted to do like a full destiny character build obviously you could port it right in the yeah. rules are in the book for that you know how that would you know sort of pan out here might be there might be a couple of things that would be different but largely the same um just it would like there'd be some minor things that would affect the pilot but um like their condition monitor for example would change but yeah um i think the big change too is edge edge is a big factor in this <laughs> I love but it. it's kind of you know in, in a way it's it's terrifying because you can use it to a great advantage but i feel like in most cases we're using it to like save face it's like right save, <laughs> save yourself from a headshot yes. in the first what was that turn two you double yeah. ppc me in the face so you do have to spend it's a while rude. it's almost best to save it for a different for that defensive opportunity that yeah. it is for an offensive yeah. kill so right or it's like i am about to die i better spend my edge and get this last yeah. hit and like the poor griffin Ah, poor Griffin. And if my, I, you know, if my Battlemaster had the edge, I could have made you re-roll that ammo check. Did he still have his edge? I wonder if he did. I don't think he did. The Battlemaster, no. I think I spent mine? it. Mine? No, Your, mine. Yeah, no. yeah. I, I think I spent it. I don't know. But yeah. Maybe I had a big mess there, now that I'm thinking about it. Did he still have his edge? Did he still have his edge? <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> check the tape. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, we'll go back. We'll, we'll, re we'll retcon this entire game. we got to replay it. Uh, it's funny. Anyway, I'll take um, my win. that's it. You got the win, man. It's fair and square. Uh, it's close, I love though. It. I was where earlier on. I was not happy about how things started, but then I quickly recovered. Yeah, I, I, I think you did. You did well, and it was smart, like keeping your mechs together. And it's great. Like once that Warhammer got into range, right? So good. Yeah, the that thing, was where I thought you were just gonna rain LRMs on me, but it wasn't too bad to get into medium range. No, it wasn't too bad at all. Um, I missed my Banshee. I wish Bubbles was on the table. Mm. More PPCs, more AC-10s, all that good stuff. Um, but I was going to say one, one final thought I have about what I really like about this system um, versus Classic. It's like, you know, you're a battle map. Battle Masters suck in Classic. Like, I don't ever want to shoot four medium lasers at anything because you're going to hit, you know, four different spots. Left torso, right torso, left leg, right arm. And it's like, ooh, you know, whatever. You know, here it's like you're boring holes in things, right? And it, and it reminds me of like MechWarrior Online or MechWarrior 4, where like, you know, pssst, like, you know, your lasers are, are converging, but you still have like that plus M to represent like cluster hits, you know, missiles spreading out and things. So I really like the right. way they did that. I think yeah. that was pretty The fact brilliant. that they're, you know, grouped. Right. It would make sense that they have a similar targeting reticle and location hit. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'm done gushing. Yeah. Um, I love this system. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, you know, let us know what you think. I'm very interested to hear about it in the comments. Um, but that said, a couple of quick announcements. Guys, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to help us out, please head on over to Patreon. Um, you can get in on the action for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, and you guys have seen the Battleytics tournament. You can get in on that at the veteran level, which is a $10 a month tier. Um, and of course, it helps out the channel. It helps us bring you things We're like sinking it all back into this. All of it. I mean, <laughs> new terrain, new cameras, right? New green screen stuff. So there's all kinds of cool stuff that we are that we're sinking that investment back we're into. Cover Aaron's entire house in this. <laughs> That's from above. Black. The outside, though. <laughs> the outside. Though. My neighbors will drive by and be like, "What is wrong with that guy?" Uh, <laughs> It'd be like the house, you know, uh, that stuff that they put on the under the siding. Uh, the Tyvek. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have DFA tieback? I do. I do. It'll be our new. Uh, that's how it's going to be, right? This is it's our like cash cow, and then we'll yeah. invest in uh, heat shielding. Oh my lord! Uh, so anyway, uh, so Patreon, and of course, guys, if if not that, then at least click that subscribe button. We are on a march to five thousand, Kevin. We're like at, we're almost at forty three hundred. This is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's been it's inch by inch. a little over a little, little over two years, just about. I think yeah. two years in February. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, so guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And of course, uh, check out Aries Games and Minis. So you can get all of the great stuff you saw on the table tonight over at Aries Games and Minis. Uh, the box sets, the Lance packs, all of that stuff, or the Force packs, I guess they're called. I don't know. Anyway, uh, they're all over there. So uh, definitely check that out. And of course, Hardware Studios, awesome terrain, X Marks, fantastic terrain. Um, and uh, that's all I got to say. So, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this exciting battle report. And of course, stay tuned. As you know, always great stuff commented from Death From Above Wargaming. So what's next? Oh, so what's next? <laughs> Guys, have a good night.